just can't ever take my mind Hello and welcome to Fender Play Live. I'm your guest host this week, Eugene Edwards. I'm back for another episode. They let me in the building. <laughs> uh, this week we're going to take a look at a genre of country music known as outlaw country. We're going to take a look at some of the artists and the songs that define that style of country. And of course we'll be uh, giving away some free gear later as well, so make sure you stick around. Now to help me out this week, uh, this is a guy I've known for many years, uh, my fine guest, Mr. Chris Masterson. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> going? Uh, oh, it's, go it's going great. I'm, I'm, I know you crashed the party a couple weeks ago. I was here for, I think, the Bakersfield episode. Right, It right. was a lovely, lovely surprise. We spent uh, last summer together uh, on tour, on the LSD tour. Yeah. Uh, Chris, uh, he play, you play lead guitar for, uh, it's a great resume. This is, uh, he plays for Steve Earle. He's played with Tanya Tucker, Sun Volt, and he's also one half of the music duo, the Mastersons, along with his wife, Eleanor. So, uh, and you guys are wrapping up a record, correct? We are. Uh, my, my wife is in the studio right now as we speak. Oh, 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 she so gave me a hall pass was, today. Oh, <laughs> thanks for lending. And, and you guys are recording it here, and uh, yeah. who else is on the record? Well, uh, Shooter Jennings produced it, how apropos what for a today's uh, <laughs> episode. That's right. That's the, that's the reason we couldn't get him, because he's, he's uh, probably recording over there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's um, you know, some of L.A.'s finest on the record. And sure. Eleanor's sister, Bonnie Whitmore, plays on the record. She's great. What a great singer. I know. Yeah, yeah. And, and Eleanor is a fantastic voice. My favorite part of the, the tour last summer was uh, on the song that, uh, that Steve and Eleanor sing together. When, when your wife first sings, he, the audience's response, it just comes out of nowhere. They, I know. She, she catches them off guard, and people just start applauding. She did that one night at the Ryman, and I was just oh, like, really? they, did that, they did that duet at the Ryman, and yeah. they did, the crowd did that. I was just like, wow. That's a moment. That's a moment. <laughs> so please check out the Mastersons. Oh, uh, and uh, and then also before we get to your personal history as a player, I I couldn't help but notice this guitar that you brought here. Uh, what what do we have? The red thing in the room. The um, red, yeah. What's the red, <laughs> red elephant in the room? This is a 1958 Tele. It's oh. obviously a refin. Um, mm -hmm. I got it from Carter's uh, Vintage Guitars. The dangerous store in Nashville. Yeah. And. Um, we, were, we had a few days off uh, last summer, and I walked in there, and I picked it up, and I was like, oh, no. Like, uh, you really? picked it up, and you just, you, you, you like, just, you just one chord, I just knew. I, I plugged into a deluxe, and I was like, oh, God. Well, and and, uh, and what's the, uh, so just, just give us, like, what, when you first picked it up, what was the feel, or the tone, or what was the thing you did that... The neck. It's a, the, it has that sort of, that, that later 50s, the, the V thing. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, a, yeah, it's a little more of a point. And even though I have big hands and I tend to, you know, think, oh, I want this baseball bat right. of a neck, I just like, this is a little more petite, but I was like, oh, my God. It's... Beautiful. I can sit and, uh, on the couch or stand on a stage and play it all day long. It's great. You, you come across a, an instrument that, that to, it opens you up as a player, and right. not always the other way around. Right. That's I mean, we can all play on anything, and you can make a joyous right. noise on anything, but every now and then you get lucky and get to... A relationship feels great <laughs> yeah. right away. Now, how long have you been playing guitar? Um, I started when I was about eight. Well, around eight was when I could get my hands around a guitar S neck. Same here. Yeah, that's kind of it. Yeah. <laughs> and... Um, I, I, I was born in Louisiana, but grew up in Houston. And but my dad is from out here in California, mm. and um, so he came up. You know, he was um, after the Navy. He was working on oil rigs and living in Bakersfield. So yeah. he was like out, you know, out at bars with Merle, at that time, and like oh, he yeah. was. And they're about the same age, so he was there. You Pretty know, at likely. the epicenter of that. Yeah. You know, and um, but so a lot of what we're going to discuss today were songs that my dad would. You know, growing up, he he, I mean, the first he, thing he I ever heard, the first song I remember hearing was you know the Carter family, Wildwood Flower. Sure. And after that, yeah. I, I and uh, and but then a lot of these songs, he my dad would play, and I would sit on the couch and act with my little electric guitar and act like I was playing. But at a certain point, my hands got big enough. Let's not it. underestimate that, guys. Just getting how to stand and hold a guitar. It's really important. The poses. Learning the shapes. Kinda, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's kinda what you gotta get the attitude down and then the rest will follow. Yeah. So so you you try and play along with them. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I, but I just I remember a lot of those songs, you know, the songs that we did. I still love today. That were some of which we're talking about today. Absolutely. And the, and you grew up in Houston, right? I did. So congratulations on the pennant with the Astros. Yeah, Good luck in the go series. Astros. <laughs> it's, a, it's it's an exciting team. Um, so uh, so a lot of times uh, on this show we focus on rock music, but Fender Play has an entire path dedicated to country music of all types. There's modern artists like Miranda Lambert or Brad Paisley, and a lot of the classics like Johnny Cash and Buck Owens. And we've looked at the Bakersfield sound, you crashed that episode. Uh, and, uh, but today we're going to take a look at another style of country known as Outlaw Country. Outlaw Country. Now let's kick it off with one of the guys who started the movement, the one and only Willie Nelson. And he, this is a very fun, I'm going to try to attempt the solo to uh, On the Road Again. Uh, it's a one, two, oh you got the rhythm, go ahead. Here I come. <laughs> it's a, so so it, it, and normally it's a little it's like at 112 VPM. It's a pretty, oh, yeah. and we'll get to the tempo thing. It's going to be part of a lesson coming up. Uh, now that solo, okay. Well, let's talk about Willie and guitar um, because there's something extremely unique. Uh, obviously, that Willie plays a nylon string guitar. He's played that that since 1969. It's a 1969 yeah. Martin. His nickname for it is Trigger, and you all know that guitar, right? It's got the whole born. It's just been just you know dragged around the world. Um, he got it as an accident. He had a, he had a sponsorship with another uh, company, and the guitar. He played an afternoon set. He just set it on stage. Someone stepped on it, or something happened, and he had to run to the nearest music store, and he needed a guitar for the the rest of the night. So they they grab a brand new at the time, 1969, a Martin uh, guitar off the wall and put a pickup on it, and the rest is history. Uh, this is a, a lovely. I just kind of out of the box uh, Fender uh, nylon string guitar, and you plug it into an amp, and you kind of have. The, the Willie tone. In, instant Willie. <laughs> um, those other parts, there's that vibrato, there's that uh, harmony part. Those things, there's some of the, the hallmarks of, of Willie's playing. Also yeah. the, uh, the, uh, the crazy chromatic. Just go, you know, uh, only Willie does that. And on that solo, uh, we hear the influence of the gypsy jazz guitar player. Right. Django yeah. Reinhardt, these little, those little little half step, uh, and then when the harmony comes in, it's almost like you, you may as well be playing a fiddle sort of thing. Right. And but but just in terms of the difference in the sound of here's uh, uh, a, a nylon string guitar uh, playing uh, a, a simple phrase here, and here it is on a Telecaster. Different overall tone, the way the strings respond, you know, especially that, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, so, uh, so, and we'll be doing a little more Willie later on. Uh, but when we talk about outlaw country, what do we mean by that? To you, what defines the genre? Um, I mean, to me, when I think about it, I think about you know, it was um, you know, a lot of these guys, Willie and Waylon, mm -hmm. they were seeking that you know, they saw what was going on in rock and roll and the, the records that the freedom that those that rock artists had. In terms of what you were allowed to 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 put on your records and release, right. vis-a-vis what the maybe the record company would have preferred. That's right. That's and, right. And, and and I you know so now it seems like a lot of people will you know put on a cowboy hat and sing about whiskey and think that's outlaw. Right. And while those things might very well be outlaw, yeah. there, was, there was there was a lot more. It was really I mean to me I, it was about art, artistic integrity. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. And and those uh, especially Waylon really kind of was really one who branched out on a on a. Uh, on a limb against his record label, or got that independence, right. and it kind of opened something up there. And also, right. and there was an audience for it in some. Well, way. and that's what. Okay, so that's another big part of it for me is to, you know musically and spiritually and everything is like what happened with Willie down in, in Texas. Right. He left Nashville. He moved right. down to Austin. And what did he find? And when you think about Willie, the first picnic or, or what happened at the Armadillo World headquarters uh -huh. it was, it was like it was the the hippies, the college hippies, and the cowboys. And they right. all hung out under the same roof, mm -hmm. watching the same show, having the same experience. And, and that is, 
a testament to the power of, of Willie and, and music in general. And what music's supposed to and, do on something. And we could yeah. use more of that right now. Yeah, yes, we could, absolutely. <laughs> Everybody just get together and, and agree yeah. on something. Now, uh, so, it's, it's, so it's more about the attitude than the sound, but, it, but what happens is we end up getting certain sounds. Of course, yeah, there yeah. are other things that we can attribute to the time, to right. the, you know, right, of exactly. course. Um, so there were uh, other uh, main artists. There was uh, there were, you know, Doug Somm out of San Antonio. There was the, the genius songwriter out of Austin, Towns Van Zant, uh, Tanya Tucker on some level, you know, Amy Luke Harris. There was Billy you know, Joe Shaver. Billy Joe Shaver, artists that were, were coming from a country approach, but they were kind of coming on the, on the fringes of it uh, at the time. Right. So uh, can, we, uh, can we jam on the progression of On the Road again just a little bit, though? Yeah. Uh, let's go to the Only bridge. if you take it to the bridge chromatically. Okay, here's, okay, so, so. <laughs> Yeah, if you ever want to refer to Willie Nelson in your playing, just do one of those crazy, deliberate, chromatic wagas. <laughs> Almost there, and he's at the oh, floor. Oh, yeah, it's, like it's just about to fall off, and then it lands, exactly. So now, we like to challenge the audience with some trivia questions, and the winner gets a fabulous prize, and that prize is a shout-out from us, live on the air. <laughs> So first up, we have a question about Willie's early days, and right. you're going to ask it. So early on in Willie's career, he took a year off and became a door-to-door -door salesman. What two items did he sell? Uh, could you imagine the doorbell rings and, you, and Willie Nelson standing there? Trying I'm to... buying what he's selling. Yeah, that's true. That's he's all a, I'm going to say. He's probably a pretty persuasive, persuasive <laughs> guy, I'm sure. So, um, and uh, what's the... Uh, Oh, this is a question from the audience. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, that didn't mean, oh wow, okay, I didn't know, okay, okay now we gotta do homework. All right, so, <laughs> so Chris Rash wants to know, what's the primary difference between outlaw country and the Bakersfield sound? Now, so, I, I, well, he's saying in his mind, it's mainly that the players may be less of the harmony singing, a la Don and Buck. Um, mm -hmm. I would think that uh, some, one thing that comes to mind in terms of just the sound of those two movements is that outlaw country, as we now looking back, has this, you just have a, a, a real groovy, halftime funky feel sure. a lot of the, the classic songs do. Uh, also, there's a, a particular tone of guitar that we're going to get into a little later uh, that really indicates outlaw country to me, and that's uh, Waylon Jennings, uh, Wayne Jennings and his use of a phaser pedal. Right. So those are some of the things. And uh, I think some of it's geography. I mean, like, certainly you know, now, now we live in a world where everything's referenceable and we can see what's going on on either coast, right. but, you know, Bakersfield was insular. It was insulated from what was going mm -hmm. on in Nashville. And it, yeah. Yeah. It, so yeah, it was informed. Well, as we discussed on that episode, yeah. it was informed by the the labor that people were doing in, in California, right. the the venues where those bands were playing. And although I'll tell you one thing, they do have in common though is that the uh, the outlaw movement, uh, a lot of it was about the artists wanting to record with their road bands. Right, they were doing songs. Yep in the clubs or in concerts, and they want to go and make a record that represented that sound. Yep. And uh, you know, Don and Buck and those guys, they used their own road band. So they, they did share some things in common. And they were both obviously responses to, uh, as to what was coming out of Nashville at the right. time. So it's, it's always a conversation, but that's a great question. So now we mentioned two major artists that drove this style of music, uh, uh, Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings. Uh, we're gonna be checking out a Waylon song later in the episode, but first let's jam on another Willie tune that you can learn on Fender Play. This is Whiskey River. My, my daughter asked me, is is there really a river, Whiskey River? And I, I think that is that. I, I certainly hope so. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to attempt the solo here. Here we go, Whiskey River. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Grief with yeah. Okay, so that's a song off of the Shotgun Willie album, which is a fantastic album. It's one of the first Outlaw Country albums. Uh, uh, Waylon Jennings is on it, Doug Somm is on it. Um, and that's a good example of, of the blues influence in Willie's uh, yeah, guitar absolutely. playing. And, but uh, really, it's a very unorthodox, very uneven, kind of unsteady thing. And then, um, with all those things, these little blues on a nylon string guitar. And then there's that lovely, this very nice, uh, how we do this yeah. beautiful harmony part, this on a Spanish sound. Yeah. And he's yeah. just kind of mixing it up there. So um, anyway, so, oh, we have a trivia winner already. Okay, right. okay, excellent. So uh, the winner was Ronnie Keister. I want to think it's Keister, actually. <laughs> but anyway, Ronnie, congratulations. Yeah. Way to go. Yeah. There's a shout out. Job well done. Now, the, here's, what's it? Oh, I'm sorry, the answer was Bibles and Vacuums, <laughs> which is probably a good album title. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Bibles and Vacuums. Yeah, yeah, first I sense, song I called, a homework assignment. Yeah, the, first, the, first song is, <laughs> the first song is called Keep It Clean. <laughs> okay, so, so they got us on that one. Here's, this, here's the second trivia question, uh, and this one involves Waylon. Now, during Waylon's first recording session, he was joined by Buddy Holly on guitar. Who played saxophone? Waylon's first recording session, Buddy Holly was on guitar, but who played saxophone? See if you can answer that one. All right, well, let's, uh, can we, let's jam on Whiskey River a little bit. I'll, I'll have you take over here uh, at first, and we'll, we'll, we'll trade a little bit. That was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Um, so and we have uh, more songs coming up, but first we have a special announcement. Fender just released a great new app called Fender Songs, and I'll tell you about it in a second. But first, here's here's a quick look. We're back. So, so what is Fender Songs exactly? Fender Songs allows you to play along with your favorite songs in real time. You just stream a song from your Apple Music account and Fender Songs will provide synced chords, scrolling lyrics, and real audio. This is a great practice tool for guitar. We, we didn't have this growing up. <laughs> we resent this. No, uh, uh, guitar, piano, or ukulele. And it's an easy way to vastly expand your playing range. Plus, on top of chords and lyrics, you can create set lists to structure your own practice time. You can adjust the song speed to learn at your own pace. You can add drum tracks. You can even record video of yourself playing to watch later and hone your performance. Try it out for free now. Okay, back to Outlaw Country. We looked at some Willie Nelson songs, but no discussion of Outlaw Country is complete without Waylon Jennings. Uh, let's check out his classic song, uh, Mamas Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up To Be Cowboys. I expect everybody in the room to sing along because we're going to start with the chorus. Oh, there you go. You've got the, uh, here, let me uh, take myself off standby there. There you go. Okay. Are driving away. 
old trucks Let them be doctors and lawyers and such Everybody at home better be singing Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys Cause they'll never stay home and they're always alone Even with someone they love All right. Good singing everybody, good singing everybody so what a beautiful song. Mama, uh, I think, I, I, I remember seeing Willie once doing it and he just saying, Mama, don't let your cowboys grow up to be babies for half the song. I mean, it was just, I, that was beautiful. I, I, think, I think Eleanor has one of those shirts. Oh, just shows the big Oh, that's good. Uh, so, it's a good point to make, yeah. Uh, so Mama's uh, 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 Waylon. So we've got this, it was a song written by Ed Bruce and the version on, uh, on, on, on the original recording has Willie Nelson on vocals as well. Uh, these, and it's a, a song, it's kind of a 12-8 time, I believe. Yeah. It's kind of got this waltzy feel. But it's got this weird turnaround. It's kind of, it drops a measure here and there. It's a little unorthodox. Probably the type of thing that a record company wouldn't, wouldn't really allow. But they're right. allowed, to, allowed to let these kind of strange things slip through on, on the records. And it, it always feels right, you know? Yeah, I mean, um, but uh, one of the hallmarks of this obviously is the phaser pedal. And can you, yeah, this is a classic Waylon Jennings sound here. <laughs> So it's like a, an envelope filter, essentially, yeah. is what's happening there. It's, it's uh, sweeping across the treble and the base of the spectrum. And Waylon, uh, well, you have the Lost Highway Phaser made right. by Fender, so we may as well mention that, a little product placement there. Um, but And I don't know how Waylon came to use that, but it's because it's, it sounds like kind of a psychedelic thing to me, but then with his booming voice, and, yeah, I don't know if that was just something areas. that was around, or that, it, it that, really that, that, feels that, like that a paradox. Dessert. But but by now it's it's just it, it it to me it's a real real hallmark of of outlaw country. Of course, no, it's it, it's like if you get asked on a show a gig, you know, give it kind of an outlaw country feel. You're you're halfway there if you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you're already you're, you're, you're on the field. Right, you're on the field. <laughs> you're, you're you're halfway there. Much like just like get a nylon guitar and, yeah, and, and you sound like Willie. Yeah. This is a a, a, a fast way, and it's very inspiring. You get it and, it, and you kind of start to sure. buy in, so to speak. Um, but uh, it, it really, really adds to the quality uh, of, of this music. Uh, and, uh, um, I, you know, growing up in Arizona where I did, uh, Waylon's yeah. legacy loomed very, very large. Uh, he spent a lot of time there in the 60s and it was always a big deal, uh, especially if you're growing up playing country music, to play a, a bar somewhere and someone says, you know, Waylon used to play here. Right, that was kind of, right. that, that was a really cool, uh, and the, yeah, he kind of, you know, he, he did like a long stint here, he used to play. There was a lot right. of clubs that laid claim to Waylon. Um, and of course, what, that, that beautiful voice and, and those, those wonderful, wonderful songs. Uh, oh, we have a trivia, uh, I'm, I'm prattling on, we have a trivia winner. All, All right. right, so, uh, so uh, Sonny Davis answered this correctly, and the answer is King Curtis. Sonny Davis, way to go. Yeah. And Chris, we have a question from, uh, oh, Coop, Kubrick Lover, 1972. Would Outlaw Country also be nearly close to Leonard Skinner or maybe even Allman Brothers? I mean, I, it's probably in the tapestry somewhere. The, I would say they definitely shared the audience. Going back That's to the enough. people that, yeah. that came to those shows, I think they definitely uh, uh, had, and I, certainly there's, there's blues, there's country. I was gonna say, and the intersection of blues yeah, and yeah. country. I don't um, think so. I always thought the Certainly with artistic uh, independence. Freedom, yeah, exactly. I, I, I guess those would be parallels. I, also, I, I'm thinking like Outlaw Country songs, as, as we'll see uh, like on Whiskey River or a little later with a, the, the next song we'll do, it lends itself to, to, to long jam because of this really wide right. open stuff, a lot of this, the outlaw country songs, so you can really stretch out and play. And of course, you know, play in the clubs sometimes. Well, dance halls, I mean, that's, that's a, right. lot of, lot, a lot of that stretching out. Let's get a dance hall. One more time, they're still dancing. Yeah. Keep playing, take another <laughs> solo. <laughs> so yeah, so there would be some similarities there, I think. Yeah. That's a good question. Uh, now, oh, so another artist that we have a, a lot of on Fender Play is Merle Haggard. Uh, and Merle was a big part of the Bakersfield sound, obviously in the 1960s, as we discussed on the Bakersfield episode. But Merle also fits in the outlaw country genre as well. Here's a guy who kind of, he did things his own way. And, and his songs are great for beginners as well. Uh, here's a great song from 1980. Uh, and it's a real wide open, this is fun. This is, if you want to jam, this is a really fun tune. This is, I think I'll just stay here and drink. Let's see here, right? we're in A. Yeah, yeah. I could Dude. be holding you tonight.
so much. Yeah. Thank you. A oh, great example that that what do we call that beat that uh, that that. Well, it's sort of a halftime. It's halftime. Halftime. Oh, um, heavy on the kick. I've heard some people call it like like the trucker. The beat. trucker beat. Yeah. It's <laughs> just kind of like this kind of goes on. You know. Yeah, you just of, picture being on the tin, just going. Like, that's right. A like, long time. The Christopher Columbus Highway, <laughs> Santa Monica Pier to uh, where it lands in Florida. I don't. Know. Oh, and uh, we have a winner uh, from the uh, last trivia question. Oh, the trivia question for you. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, from Frank Lopez. What was the only movie Waylon was in? I want to say songwriter, but I know that's not correct. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Frank, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. All right, you stumped me. Does Frank have the answer? Hopefully. All right, come on, Frank. You got to give us the answer. Yeah. If it's a Kubrick film, though, I'd be really impressed. <laughs> Wouldn't that be weird? Like, he actually did the voice of Hal. Who knew? No, no. Uh, so, so Outlaw Country is something that was around in the 70s and, and the 80s. Uh, now, are there modern artists today that still play that style? Well, you uh, were on an album that refers to it not that long ago, right? Steve Earls, the, uh, uh, so you think you're an outlaw. So you want to be an outlaw. So you yeah. want to be an outlaw. Yeah. You played a lot of this on, on that record, a lot of this style, you know? Yeah. And, and of course, Waylon's son, Shooter Jennings, is a, a really great example. Well, of Steve, I mean, the, the Steve record was almost like, like uh, Honky Tonk Heroes, the Waylon record, oh, was almost yeah, yeah. the template for that. I mean, just sonically. Yeah, 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 exa yeah exactly. Um, uh, also, but you know, Jason Isbell definitely incorporates a lot of different feels and, and works on the fringes of what Nashville's currently right. doing. So, in that sense, I think he's related. And also, uh, my shooters out there carrying the torch, like you said. Absolutely, and and shooters carrying it in in the philosophical way, and where he's you can never really pin him down. One day, no, he's, he's truly he's truly his own artist. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. It, you know, uh, and also, uh, our buddies, uh, brothers Osborne. Uh, there's elements between. Uh, between uh, uh, John's guitar playing, between JD's vocal, that deep masculine vocal thing. I, I hear elements in right. some of their music, and, and I know those guys know, know that genre really well. They grew up playing it too, so. Right. Uh, look, can, can we jam again on that Merle tune? Oh yeah, sure. You, you start us off again, right. you did. Um. Here, but now it's time to get to challenge you guys with this week's homework. What do we have for them? We have okay. the, the beginners do what? So for the beginner, you're gonna learn and strum the chords to Whiskey River. Very good. Now intermediate, you're gonna play on the road again. And for the advanced, you're gonna play the solo to on the road again. <laughs> Get your Django out, as they say. <laughs> uh, now, uh, is there anything you before you have to go? Is there anything that you'd like to mention? Anything you'd like to plug? This is your chance to kind of. You know, just um, we, we have a new Masterson's record coming out in the spring that we're yeah. finishing up right now. Uh, gonna make another Steve Earle record uh, in um, December. Uh, oh, you're a busy guy. There's some dates on the East Coast um, with uh, Jackson Brown and Emmylou Harris and Steve and Patty. Wow, and so great we, bills. We got some stuff. Uh, and where do people uh, go find you online? Uh, TheMastersonsMusic.com and on Instagram and all that stuff. All the usual you know. spots. Yeah. All the usual spots. Well, thank you so much for, for, you know, this means a lot to me having you here. Oh, uh, it means I, a lot to be here. No, have you here as often as possible, um, you know, in, until they, they, they throw me out of the place, really. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, I, you know, and, and uh, it, it's been a joy, and, and thank you. I know that you're, you've been really, really busy. And, no, I'm uh, and really Thank you for sharing your, your thoughts and your, and your beautiful playing with us. Thanks. Hope we get to do it again. Everybody, Chris Masterson. Woo! Thanks. <laughs> All right, now. Next up, we're going to be welcoming back our community guru, Dylan, to tell us what's new on the community and on the site. And of course, announcing the winner of this week's gear giveaway. But first, 
If you really want to master the outlaw country techniques and sound like Willie or Waylon, then we've put together a playlist of skills and song lessons from Fender Play to help you out. Check out the link, the comments for more info. I'm sorry, check out the link, the comments more for info. I can't say this. Uh, <laughs> please welcome Dylan, I can't speak. <laughs> I feel like Ron Burgundy there. Right. Uh, so, so every week on Fender Play Live, we give away a free piece of gear to a Fender Play subscriber just for hitting their weekly practice streak. What, what is a streak, you ask? Well, a Fender Play streak is when you practice three times a week for seven minutes each time. And hitting your streak each week is a great way to make faster progress in your learning and build mu muscle memory. But it also qualifies you for the Fender Play giveaway. And each week, if you achieve your streak, you're eligible to win our weekly giveaway. Oh. The lucky winner gets to choose from a list of strats, tellies, jazz masters, basses, amps, all just for practicing. So, and the best part is the, the more consecutive streaks you hit, the more chances you have to win. And it's announced right here on Fender Play Live. So without further ado, Dylan, who's this week's lucky winner. Can I get some fanfare, please? Oh, sorry. Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. This week's winner is Manuel F. Manuel oh, F. Yay, yay, yay. Well, and congratulations to you. <laughs> for more info on how to be qualified for this weekly giveaway, check the link in the comments. Now, uh, what's been going on in the community this week? Yeah, thanks, Eugene. Uh, this, this week's been great in the community. Uh, for those of you that don't know what the community is, right. it's this Fender Play community. And basically, it's where members join and they get to uh, commiserate with each other on their experience learning guitar and they basically kind of help each other learn, they talk about their experiences, the good, the bad, and everything in between. Yeah. And then um, teachers from the community, excuse me, teachers from Fender Play, as well as myself, chime in, give support, and um, kind of supply anything you might need to supplement your learning experience. Sounds like a very supportive yeah. community. It is pretty awesome. So, um, particular shots out this week. So okay. we want to shoot out to a couple of the community members. We have Craig Buzak, am I saying that correctly? I'm saying Buzak. I Buzak? Yeah, I like Buzak. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel like we're both close. No, uh, <laughs> his son was playing uh, Master of Puppets, and that, we all know that quintessential song yeah. that everyone must know as a child. So uh, we want to give a big congratulations to Craig for that. And mm -hmm. uh, we also get a lot of really great questions on the community every week, and it's this is a great platform to sort of answer a lot of people at once. Mm -hmm. um, Brian Quaidlebaum, and I think I'm probably batting a 1,000 right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Brian asks how much... Uh, does a guitarist finished af uh, affect its sonic qualities? So meaning like, how does it affect the way the guitar sounds? What do you think about this? I, I think there is a difference. Uh, w what with the, well, I'm thinking of polyurethane. Mm -hmm. uh, big word. How would you, yeah, it is a big word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I think of it as like a, like a tighter compressed yeah. uh, sound. And, and for all I know, maybe it, 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 it is tighter on the wood. I don't yeah. know if that's why. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to what? As opposed to. Uh, well, like Chris's uh, guitar, for example, has like sound. a nitrocellulose finish. Mm -hmm. And so this is an older way, I believe, to finish guitars. So the wood breathes a little bit more. Right. It's more open sound, more yeah. airy sound. There's qualities to both. I think it's really up to the player's preference, you know? Yeah, um, but yeah, it, is, it exists. The difference does exist. That's true. Yeah, so maybe try, go to the music store, try two Fender guitars out and see which one you like best. Good idea. All right, well, well, every week we're adding new songs and skills to the Fender Play platform. So there's always something new to learn. And Dylan, what's new this week? Yeah, so tons of great new songs every week. Just like you said, this week, let's start right out of the gate with something that corresponds not at all with what we've been talking about. Perfect. But it's a really important song that you must know. Um, so help me out if you've ever heard this before. I'll play a little bit. So it's uh, it's it's Crazy Train by All C Osborne. <laughs> One of the Osborne brothers. Yeah, yeah. So this thing has the kitchen <laughs> sink in it. One of the Osborne, brothers. like we were talking about earlier, right? If you're paying attention. Let's see. Um, so this has just about every guitar technique and some that I've never heard of. Anything, right? So uh, palm muting, alternate picking, hammer ons, pull offs. Uh, um, yeah, everything. Everything is in. That's just so. the intro. That's just the intro. We didn't get to the main body of the song. So another big one, this is uh, Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones. It's syncopated strumming, ballad tempo. Mm -hmm. So if those are things you're working on, this will be a great one to learn. So we got... Sort of that kind of like roving 
pulse to this mm -hmm. song. And that's something that really, it's really important it's to be able to develop film, great record, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then last but not least, in case you need whiplash, we're moving over to the 70s with uh, Ain't No this. Mountain High Enough. Ain't I know No this Mountain, Mountain High Enough. Song. So we've got... Just like the record, that's just like the record. So uh, that's it. That's all this. You know, that's all I'm gonna bring out. Well, thank you, Dylan, and a huge thank you to Chris Masterson for joining yeah. us. Yeah. Wow. This has been a lot of fun. What a fun genre. So I'm Eugene Edwards. Keep practicing, and we'll see you next time. You ready to strum that G chord? All right. All right here we go.